Hey, Dan here with Sweet Maria's. For this bullet roast profile video, I chose to roast an Ethiopian coffee, and it's one that we really love around here called uh, Ethiopia Kion Mountain Taru. Uh, taru has a lot of what we love in wet process Ethiopias in general. It has um, a really nice floral cup characteristic that seems to come through best in the light roasts. And it also has a very nice acidity and it's just a real nice pristine cup. And so I wanted to try to highlight that and come up with a really simple roast profile that required very few adjustments. Um, and I had two pounds of coffee on hand, so I figured that gives me two shots to try to achieve that. In coming up with a roast plan and approach for Taru, I wanted to take a more uh, standard tapered approach. So starting with my hottest heat setting and then sort of tapering down towards the end. Uh, I didn't want to roast this coffee too long. I wanted to shoot for something under 10 minutes and um, I also wanted to have a relatively gentle first crack. So I planned on tapering my roast down to P5 um, at the end. But backing up to where my settings are on the roaster, I have my default roast settings at 401 degree Fahrenheit charge temp um, and then after charging the roaster, uh, the roaster kicks in at P8 with um, the fan setting to 2 and the drum speed to 7. My first pass didn't go quite as I'd hoped. You can see on the graph here that when I dropped to P5, that caused my rate of rise to crash, uh, extending the middle leg of the roast and I wound up with just a lot longer roast time than what I'd hoped for. Uh, but it was trial and error, and um, this allowed me to make some adjustments the second time around, and I got a lot closer to achieving what I um, set out for as far as parameters goes. For my second roast, I made a couple adjustments to how I plotted out my roast changes, um, most notably ending at P6, so not dropping down to P5, and um, now I only have two heated adjustments, which sort of achieves that simple roast profile that I was hoping for. Um, and it also helped to keep my rate of rise above 10 degrees Fahrenheit there in the last couple minutes and uh, hitting first crack at a reasonable time. The other change I made was I bumped up the fan settings towards the end of the roast and uh, that was really to ensure a fairly gentle first crack, but also I noticed uh, on that first pass that the coffee it produces quite a bit of chaff, more than I remember, but then again, I've only roasted 100 grams of this coffee at a time, so it was eye-opening roasting a full pound. Um, and so I wanted to pull as much of that chaff off of the roast as I could without causing my rate of rise to crash again. So let's have a look at the roasted coffee. Um, you can see there on the left, that's my first pass, and on the right is my second pass. They both look pretty even in color. You know, I, I'll say that they both look pretty light, um, a little lighter than um, what I was shooting for as far as color goes. Uh, they both still have quite a bit of chaff intact. It looks like the right roast, the, the second roast, has less chaff. Um, but then when you look at the grounds, which are also pretty similar in color, the um, second roast has more chaff in the grounds. And that could be just uh, luck of the draw with what I scooped from the bags. Um, but it is interesting since I upped the fan speed quite a bit on that second roast. So let's go ahead and see how these taste. It's what's in the cup that counts after all, right? Uh, these are 13 grams of coffee, and I believe these are 9-ounce cups. I'll have to double-check that. But I like to use these uh, narrow cups for light roasts because uh, it, they allow the coffee to form a thicker crust at the top, so I don't risk it breaking on its own. So this is the first roast, and it's really delicious. It's sweet. Uh, floral, it has some acidity. The fruit is a little leaning towards berry for me, um, but there is some bitter sweetness behind all that that uh, I find a little distracting. I'm surprised to get any real roast flavor in there uh, considering how light the roast is, but I'm assuming it's 
uh, that extended uh, latter part of the roast. Yeah, the second roast is a lot brighter than the first one. Um, it has a lot of what uh, we describe in the review. It's, it's definitely floral. Um, it's super delicate. I will say that it has a slight grassiness in there. Um, it's not bad at all. It's very slight. I, I think this roast is delicious and I prefer it over the first roast. But I think that I would um, extend the development time after the uh, beginning of first crack uh, when I go back and roast this coffee again. 13% um, is just a little short. I'd probably go another 30 seconds and um, I think that would round off that little bit of grassiness that's in there. And going back to the first one after having tasted uh, my second roast, that uh, darker sort of cocoa flavor that is behind the cut profile, it's a lot more noticeable after having tasted the second one. It's like I said, it's still really nice. I think it helps to start off with a really nice coffee. Um, you're gonna get, uh, probably get a tasty brew as long as you don't uh, totally screw up the roast. Um, but I like, the, uh, I like the overall flavors of my second roast better. If you'd like to take a look at the graph in more detail, you can link to it in the description below. That'll take you to my roast world profile or you can check out the Taru graph as well as look at the previous bullet roast profile that I did on the Polar Espresso Holiday Blend. Thanks a lot for watching.